So a while back, one of my students brought this question to my attention and I haven't been sleeping ever since. Okay, I've been sleeping just fine, but I've been thinking about this question a lot because not only was it a really challenging question at first, but also because as we dissected it and worked through it, I realized that it demonstrates just how important it is to know certain basics of math on the SAT. Now, the original question was actually on a blue book practice exam. So what we're gonna be looking at today is the same format and type of question, but it's not the same exact question that you're gonna find on the blue book exam. So no spoilers to worry about here. So here's the question that I'm talking about. And what I love about this question is that it demonstrates how powerful understanding some basic principles of parabolas can be when you encounter parabola based questions on the SAT, in particular, if they also involve constants. So let's break this thing down. The very first thing that we're going to want to know is how the vertex of a parabola can instantly turn into an equation for us. So as you may or may not know, we have three different forms that a parabola can take. The first one is gonna be standard form, which we see right here, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Another form would be factored form. And this is something that you are probably familiar with because we're going to have y equals x minus p times x minus q. And this is often where we find ourselves when we're trying to solve for x-intercepts because factored form shows us the x-intercepts as p and q. Now the third and final form, and the one that we're going to want to use here, is vertex form. And pretty straightforward because vertex form shows us the vertex of a parabola. And the formula for that is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So the first thing we would do is simply plug the vertex in to this equation. Oh, and I should probably mention that hk is the vertex where h is the x coordinate of the vertex and k is the y coordinate of the vertex. So if we plug this in, we get y equals a times x minus eight. And why is it not positive eight? Because in the formula, it's minus h. So even though in the vertex, it's a positive eight, we're subtracting that positive eight. x minus eight squared plus 16. And since it's plus k, we just keep that positive, right? So that is step one. And let me make some room here. So if you need to go back and take a screenshot or whatever, you do you, but I wanna move this up so I have a little bit more room. And by the way, I definitely encourage you to try and solve this on your own first if you think you have an idea of how to do so, get some extra practice in. Okay, so step one would be just identifying, okay, if we know the vertex, we also know that it's gonna look like this in vertex form. Now, the second thing that I'm gonna take note of is, it is saying that the parabola intersects the axis at two points. Intersects at two points. What does that mean? Well, let's think about it. Visually, if we have a graph, a parabola is either going to be right side up or upside down, right? Now, as you can see, both of the examples do intersect at two points, but we could alternatively have something like this, where it doesn't intersect at all. This is never gonna to touch the x-axis. Or something like this, where it's flush with the x-axis and it just touches at this one point right at the vertex. So basically what it's telling me, if it intersects at two points, is that if it is a positive parabola, the vertex is below the line. And if it is a negative parabola, parabola or like an upside down parabola, the vertex is going to be above the x-axis. In this case, we know if the vertex is 8, 16, that 16 is going to be above the x-axis because we could count like, pretend it's like 8 over 16 up. So, you know, maybe our vertex is somewhere over here. So because of that, it's going to have to be an upside down parabola. And this is all just based on, you know, having the knowledge of 
what vertex form means and what it means for a parabola to intersect at two points. The final piece of knowledge that's really helpful to know is that this A determines whether or not you have a right side up or an upside down parabola. If A is negative, you're going to have an upside down. And if A is positive, you're going to have a right side up. So just based off of that, I know that A is going to have to be negative because my vertex is above the x-axis. So I need a negative A value to make an upside down parabola and get these two points of intersection. Now, definitely, if you don't know all of this, what you could do is you could grab Desmos. So I've plugged my stuff into Desmos here. And we obviously don't know what A is, but you can kind of see that if you mess with A, right now it's positive and I don't have any intercepts. But if I go down and make it negative, oh, look, now I have two intercepts just like I want. So even if you don't remember that rule, you can quickly figure it out by plugging it into Desmos and sliding A around for a little bit. All right, now back to the problem at hand. It is asking us about a plus B plus C, which unfortunately is in the wrong form because this is standard form, but we're in vertex form. So what the heck are we supposed to do? Well, let's actually just convert this to standard form. And the way we do that is simply by foiling out. An easy way to think about this is we're going to want to do our exponents first, right? If you think about PEMDAS, so we can foil this part out first. And this is going to become x squared minus 16x plus 64. And then obviously we still have this plus 16 left over, but let's not worry about that for now because all this stuff in parentheses is still getting multiplied by a, right? So then this becomes ax squared minus 16ax plus 64a. All right, and then now I'll add that 16 at the end, plus 16. So now that I have all this foiled out, I need to relate it to standard form and figure out what is A, B, and C. So remember, A is our coefficient in front of x squared. In this case, our A literally is A, all right? So if we're just trying to figure out A plus B plus C, we would have A plus, remember B is our coefficient in front of x, down here in front of x, we have negative 16a. Uh, so I guess instead of plus, it would be a minus a minus 16a. So you see I'm getting rid of the x squareds and the x's because we just want a, b, and c. We just want the stuff in front of x squared and x. And then the tricky one is c because c is going to be my constant. All of my number that is not attached to x or x squared. And you might be tempted to just say, oh, well, plus 64a, but it's actually both of these guys. Because since they're not attached to x, we want to add them together in order to get our c value. So then we would have plus 64a plus 16. And I'm going to simplify in a second here and move some stuff around. So, you know, definitely pause the video, rewind as much as you need to. But this is just to be clear, this is my A plus B plus C, all that right there. All right. Now I do want to simplify that. So I'm going to go ahead and make some space and move this up. So this would simplify to 49A and that's A minus 16. So 1 minus 16 plus 64, 49 plus 16. And then this is going to be equal to our answer choices. And the trick is, if this is going to be, you know, if we want A to be negative, because remember, this is, the, this is the same A from our original vertex form as well that we want to be negative. So when we plug our answers in, A is going to end up having to be negative. And because of that, it's going to end up being the lowest possible number. I'll show you why. If we plug in 15... Then after we subtract our 16, we get negative 1 over here. So then the 49a gets divided by a negative number, and we end up with, you know, a is negative, right? Um, if we chose any other answer, like if we chose 17, then 17 minus 16 is positive 1. And then these are just going to be even higher positive numbers. So 
when we divide that 49a by a positive number, a becomes positive, which is not what we want. So it has to be the lowest possible number on here. And if that question was a little bit too advanced for you, you might wanna start with this video here where I go over all of the different ways that Desmos can not only save you time, but also just make the math section on the SAT a heck of a lot easier.